Hey everyone and welcome to the face-off between the Saramonic Blink 500B2 which we've got just down there and the Rode Wireless Go which is the two main kind of competitors out there when it comes to the small wireless transmitter and receiver microphone setups. So the main difference between them, the, the Rode pretty much well known within the industry, good reputation and probably the go-to for most people. The Saramonic is more of a budget option but at the same time being more expensive and the budget option is mainly just because of how much stuff you actually get as part of the kit. Now if you go back to the unboxing video what you'll notice is that the Saramonic comes with two transmitters. So if you go back to the unboxing video what you'll notice is that the Saramonic comes with two transmitters and one receiver whereas the Rode Wireless Go only comes with one transmitter and one receiver and basically you cannot pair any more to the, the Rode. Um, people have hacked ways in which, which you can attach more using splitters on the source device uh, where, wherever your audio is going to but basically it's essentially two transmitters with the Saramonic and one transmitter with the uh, Rode. So having done quite a bit of testing with both of them the conclusion I've come to is essentially that the Rode is the one that I actually prefer and the main reason is because of the reliability. So throughout my testing with the Saramonic basically I was struggling to actually get it to work um, in the way that it's intended to. So the biggest issue was with the Rode Wireless Go it's, it's a case of you turn it on, in fact I'll do it as, as I talk, so both of them have a pair button at the bottom just there or sorry a power button so on the receiver it's at the top and on the transmitter it's at the bottom the uh, main reason for that is obviously you've got your microphone at the top so you literally just turn it on and then as soon as that light comes on straight away you're paired and as you can see it's picking up the audio straight away now the problem with the Saramonic was you can cycle through different gain levels on each each product and what I've done is I've pulled together a little list of uh, pros and cons. And the first one is basically the road connects each time, each time and every time. So as soon as I connected it using a road cable, so I used the road cable on both of them just to be even and fair. Not that I'm thinking there's gonna be anything different between this and the one that came with the Saramonic. Um, and then you attach it to a lightning port. And then essentially that then goes into the iPhone as so and then this end can connect to either the Rode Wireless Go or the Saramonic depending on which one you use it. So what I did find was initially I was actually trying it with a third party one so this is just a longer one that um, I had lying around the house it works fine with every other accessory however with these particular microphones what was happening is it wasn't actually detecting this it wasn't uh, showing up as a certified device so what was happening is the iPhone was still using its built-in microphone so all of my initial testing I was kind of confused because everything sounded the same and everything sounded really muffled and I've actually posted a video where it's pretty much similar similar story where the sound just isn't great so what I then found was obviously you do need to try the original dongle or uh, an actual certified one I'd probably suggest just use the one that came with the phone or buy one straight from Apple and then use that and then since I've used this uh, the road has worked every single time what the Saramonic did was basically when I've actually gone to connect it so we'll power power the Saramonic up which is just a case of holding the buttons and then on the Saramonic each transmitter basically has some gain levels and you you just go up and down now if you go all the way down essentially what you get is you get a flashing light for showing that it's basically paired with the receiver but what you also get is you get these little LEDs and essentially there's six settings so you go all the way down and the lights are off you then go so this is setting one that's now setting two three four five and six now what I was finding was on setting one so with all the lights off it was uh, working fine it's it sent the signal through to the iPhone as soon as I went to two three four it would do nothing and then it was only when I got to six that it would then send a signal again anything in between and it was basically giving me this uh, interference and I tried it several times I disconnected it um, restarted the phone tried all the usual stuff but it would do the same thing every single time where instead of recording any audio it would just record a 
almost like a static interference and obviously this is during my testing and it did this so that's not something that I can afford with videos where I'm trying to get stuff done in a single cut so for that reason that straight away pretty much ruled the ceremonic out now I have got a few other things that I did actually make a list of so we'll just quickly go through those as well so the ceremonic worked on lower and high gains but nothing in the middle ceremonic audio tripped out creating a pulsing sound on all middle settings no screen on the ceremonic makes it a lot harder um, when I first unboxed the road it wasn't really that big of an issue so I was thinking as long as it does its job then then it's fine but the thing is without a screen on the receiver for the ceremonic you have no way of actually knowing especially if you're not using an app um, that displays the audio so for example on the standard uh, stock camera app that I use for the most part when I'm making my videos on the on the iPhone it doesn't display your audio like it does in Filmic Pro now I do have Filmic Pro but the reason I don't use that is because the view viewing uh, the actual viewing win window so it actually what the original camera app does is it crops in slightly and it gives you a little bit of image stabilization as a result and what Filmic Pro does is I'm guessing it's using the full frame so it's basically it crops out and it's it's just a different look so generally I'll, I'll go with the built-in uh, app and for that reason I have no way of knowing if the audio is actually recorded until I stop recording which is a, a complete no-no I don't want to have that worry next issue is yeah so this sound with the lavalier mic attached onto the roads is very good so the road itself if you just have this clipped on so with the transmitter if you just have this clipped on generally the the sound is still it's it's more it's richer than uh the mic that i'm actually using right now so at, at the moment i'm using a lightning adapted uh, lavalier mic and with this obviously what I need to do is just purchase another standard lavalier or lapel mic just to go into the normal um, connection but other than that basically you can use this on its own and the audio is is definitely good enough but obviously just for a little more isolation I think if if I was to get a, a just any cheap lavalier mic I think that that'll pretty much make this unbeatable essentially okay so so far all the things about the road have been positive but there are a few negatives about the road system as well so the first one is that the windshield so this is the windshield that actually comes with the or the dead cat if you want to call it and basically it, all it has is these two little rubber nubs and they essentially just clip into these now if i try and demonstrate this on camera as as i said in the unboxing video it doesn't really have a click um, that's on but as soon as you brush it slightly as you can see it just falls off and by the very nature of when you're going to be using uh, a windshield you're going to be either outdoors you might be on a bike do, do jogging something like that there's there's going to be a reason why you're actually using this in the first place and this is not this is not good enough and the, the, the funny thing is I actually saw a video over a year ago of the Rode Wireless Go and back in that video, Rode actually acknowledged that they were aware that this, this solution wasn't good enough and apparently claimed that anybody who buys one of their Rode Wireless Goes is going to get a replacement once they come up with one. But obviously, as of now, they still haven't come up with anything. So that's not a good sign when it comes to actually fixing products that they've already got out on the market. Right, the next negative with the Rode is that it should come with a lavalier mic included. Now, as we've seen from the unboxing video, the, the ceremonic comes with a lot of kit with it and something like this where it's just they don't have to include their their more premium um, lavalier mic. They've got one, I believe it sells for about 45 or 50 pounds. This something like this where I'm pretty sure this is just a pretty standard generic kind of lavalier mic probably only 10 to 15 pounds something like this should be included as part of the uh, the kit so it's 160 pounds for the Rode Wireless Go with just one transmitter and one receiver and the Saramonic basically has twice as many uh, transmitters with two microphones three uh, USB-C cables it's just got so much more yes it's more expensive this particular one is 60 pounds more because this is priced at 220 however you can also get the lightning the b4 version which is I believe 200 pounds 
so potentially just 40 pounds more and basically you don't have to worry about charging the transmit uh, the receiver for that one and basically you have two transmitters you have you're still probably going to have the two lavalier mics you're still going to come with all the other accessories so for the price it's it's not that expensive for them to just include uh, a lovely mic and basically give you a full kit. It's not the fact that they're cheaping out or anything, it's just the fact that this system works very, very well, but it's not a complete solution. So for occasion, uh, some occasions, you are gonna wanna just clip on a, a lavalier mic just to get a little bit more isolation from the actual uh, microphone system. So for that reason, I think it should come with a lavalier mic. Uh, the other thing I did note is, so the clips on the back of uh, the Rode and the Saramonic, the clip on the, the Rode, it's it's stiff enough to where it will hold. And I've actually tested this in cold shoe mount or hot shoe mounts, whichever, whichever one they're called. Um, and it, it seems to hold in perfectly fine. Whereas the one on the Saramonic is so stiff. I mean, this, it, it almost feels like it's breaking when you get to the end of it. There's that much resistance. And if you are trying to just clip this onto your collar, it can be quite awkward. The other thing is obviously with this, there is no built-in windshield or dead cat, and there is no attachment for this either. So if this is being used in a windy environment or anywhere basically where you've got a lot of uh, ambient noise, essentially you're gonna to have to use this with the, the lavalier mic, which basically forces you to, to go that route. Probably one of the, the last few things is just the fact that it's it's a lot more compact. I mean, if I, if I hold both of those in one hand, you can see just how small these are in comparison to the Saramonic system, which even with just two of them, you can, you can see how much of a difference it does make. Obviously with these being a square shape, uh, this is more of a, an awkward kind of shape that will cl uh, clip onto either your trousers or your top depending on how you're using these and also just for all of the accessories that they, they come with as well. Whilst it is good that obviously it comes with two, two microphones because potentially you could need it, um, a lot of the times you are forced into that because of the design and because of the fact that obviously you have no shield for this, this particular microphone. So if used outdoors, this will probably pick up a lot more wind noise than you would with the, the road, albeit the, the windshield on this is pretty awful and really they need to come up with a better solution for that. So in conclusion, it will be the road system that I do actually keep and the ceremonic system will actually be getting sent back. The main reason is just the unreliability uh, when it comes to that, the digital interface where it just doesn't work every single time. And that's basically all you need from, from your microphone system. I mean, in theory, with the way this is set up with just a one light and no other displays, nothing to worry about, simple dial on the transmitter showing you your gain. In theory, this should have been a home run. It should have been so easy for them. But essentially what they've done is they've messed up because for me at least, I found with several different apps, the voice recorder app, the built-in uh, camera app, um, I didn't actually test it with Filmic Pro, but by that stage, because it already failed me twice, where instead of audio, it was basically giving me this kind of chirping sound. What I'll do is I'll try and insert a clip of that. Just to give you an idea in terms of what it was actually doing. But just because of that unreliability, it's just not for me. So for me, because of the fact that I'm doing single cut videos, I need something reliable. And as, as is usually the way, the industry uh, leader when it comes to these kind of things, the, 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 the well-known brand, the, essentially the more expensive brand as well, bearing in mind what you're actually getting with these two kids, uh, that's the one that the win goes to.